Good morning, evening, afternoon, wherever it is, whatever time it is where you're watching this from. Um, I did some uh, bridge fishing the past couple of fishing trips that I took. And if you've seen the videos, I was specifically after sheep's head. Also did get in some black drum. Acting like it was fighting hard, but I think that's a little black drum. And even some smaller red fish. And um, of course the trash fish that are under there, under the pilings. Okay. That's a first. And hopefully a last for today. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, I watched a couple of guys on YouTube that kind of inspired me to want to try it out. And for the most part it was a success. The biggest issue I had was staying stationary whenever I was trying to uh, drop down my line for these fish or um, even pulling them out from the deeper water. My line is flowing quite a bit back this ways already. So I wish I could figure out a way to tie onto these things. And I did some looking around on the internet, YouTube and Google and whatnot. And I did see a guy that um, fished out of a boat, you know, just a regular fishing boat, not a kayak. And he did um, he did kind of what I'm what I'm going to explain here, but he did it with a hula hoop. You know, he cut a hula hoop in half. He threaded a rope all the way through the entire length of the hula hoop and put a carabiner on the end of his rope. And that's how he got around those bridge pilings. Now, when you're in a boat, it's a lot easier to get up to these pilings and walk up anywhere on your boat. And, and um, I even saw one guy down there underneath the bridge this past fishing trip I took. And he just walked up to it and he was able to reach around the pilings. These pilings that I was fishing around, I want to say they're probably only three by three square uh, pilings. So, you know, a six foot diameter. So I'm going to try to put together something that um, is a spin-off of another project that a guy did online specifically for his kayak he used a pool noodle which you can use i'm going to be using some foam uh, practice balls that i got from walmart they're uh, practice balls for baseball i'm pretty sure they're going to float i kind of thought maybe you could use a tennis ball but i don't know if you drilled a hole through the tennis ball and um, once you see the way i'm going to set this up I don't know if the, the tennis ball will float still if water gets in it. Now your ball that you use or whatever um, device you use, it's not going to be in the water very long. So I'm sure you could grab onto it before it did sink. So let me get into the video. I'm going to switch camera angles here and try to explain what I'm trying to accomplish here. Okay, these are the materials that I'm going to use. Obviously, I'm just going to use one of these. Uh, you can get a pack of these for $10. That's probably going to be your biggest investment uh, into this project. But if you split the cost down once tax is involved, I think each one of these balls comes out to be about $1.80. Uh, you can get these spring links for $0.96 cents each. So you're looking at $2 there. So you're in at about $4 so far. This rope, this is what I use for my anchor line. On my kayak, it's just some diamond braided poly rope. It's plenty um, flexible. It's not, it's not gonna sit in a big mess on your kayak when you're trying to put it away after you're done using it. 
you can basically just wrap it up uh, maybe put a velcro strap around it put it back under your seat and then obviously you're going to need a drill bit to get through these uh, foam balls and you want to make sure it's bigger than um, the diameter of your rope obviously a good way to do that is just put your rope on top of it if you can see the drill bit behind you're good to go and then some scissors and you probably want to use also a lighter so that you can singe uh, the ends of this rope so that it's easier to feed through and that you don't have any fraying starting to happen while you're out there i'm sorry about the wind noise if it is bad i do have a wind dampener on uh, my main gopro here on my hat here i'm using um it's a media mod so i apologize if the wind's bad let me go ahead and get these uh, materials out and ready to use, get my drill bit put in my drill and show you what I'm gonna do. All right, got my uh, foam practice ball out. I did go get a lighter so that I can uh, get the ends of this nice and tidy. Make sure that this doesn't start fraying later on whenever we go out and use this. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to drill this hole through the ball. Obviously you just want to go all the way through, pick a spot, and go for it. I'm using a piece of wood underneath it just so I don't hit the bed of my truck. Um, it, maybe you won't be working on the bed of your truck, but it is wise to put a piece of wood underneath. That way you got something to go into. Um, just give a nice... A nice nice hole in the ball I don't know if this is gonna work so I'm just gonna go kind of slow and start uh, just going in see if I can get me a nice hole drilled there we go we got a hole straight through the ball uh, that worked out okay and then we'll just start by feeding the rope through it and what we're gonna do on this end is attach a carabiner Use whatever knot you want, but obviously you want to use a knot that's going to hold because you are going to be on the bridge and you don't want to, you know, have it come loose and start floating away. Yes, you can probably retrieve it pretty easy, but if it does come loose from the carabiner and your carabiner falls off, well, you're out of carabiner. The ball might also come off and float away. You might have to go after that, depending on the wind conditions. That might not be very fun. Okay, to tie to my carabiner, I'm just using a, an anchor knot. If you don't know how to tie one, you can look it up online. Uh, they're pretty easy to tie. You just basically come in. I start my knots coming from the top down just because that's the way I do it. You can do it however you'd like. Uh, leave yourself a good length of rope. Make another loop. Come through. Go around uh, your main line back here and then come through the two loops that you just made and pull that tight cinch it down and then you can just uh, finish off with a half hitch and then also pull that tight that's a good knot i use it for my anchor on my kayak it will not come undone um, and that should work out for you but use whatever knot you want i mean this is just the one i i use you can go another step and maybe put some zip ties here if you want to you can lash it or you can just cut it short and singe it with the lighter again and uh, keep everything nice and neat so that's going to be what you throw into the water the idea behind this is when you throw this into the water say your piling is right in front of you, you throw it in the water and you have a current that's coming you know this way well that ball when you let the line out it's going to float with the current and it should come around to where you can either paddle over to or pedal whatever you got or even grab it with your paddle um, whatever you want to do and just grab it and once you get it around that piling piling say it's around the piling well then the next step all you got to do pretty self-explanatory then you got yourself tied off the end of this rope what I think I'm gonna do with mine is just cleat it um, tie it to a cleat on my boat you can also use a your anchor trolley if you have one that way you can position yourself uh, with the current however you want to be fishing usually you want to be fishing of course to the front of your boat 
it's a lot easier if you're in a boat you can fish wherever you want stand up go to the back come to the front but us in kayaks we obviously know it's easier to fish to the front now i am going to take this a step further um, it's probably not necessary but i'm going to do it i'm just going to tie a knot right here to keep this ball from uh, sliding down the end of the rope and that can be just a very simple half hitch knot it doesn't have to be fancy as long as it's bigger than the, the diameter of the hole that you drilled you should be good to go and right there that'll keep your ball secure or whatever you use this is it guys that is super simple it costs you about a little under six dollars to make once you divide the cost up of this which yes you did have to pay or i did have to pay ten dollars for these but when you think about the section of rope that you need if i just use 15 foot out of a 50 foot uh, spool uh, divide that by three or six or whatever it is you can make uh, uh, plenty of these and that's that's what i came up with so this is going to be a little more tidy than a pool noodle i think i've got a kayak that doesn't have a lot of room it's just a 33 inch wide kayak when i'm done with it i can put some uh, a velcro strap around that or whatever i have twisty tie some kind of wrap and just chunk it under my seat or put it in my storage box in the kayak that's about it guys i'm gonna go put this around a tree real quick just so you can get the general idea i'm sure you already do but i'll do it anyway now whatever size piling you're going to be fishing around let's say like i said the ones i was fishing around were three by three or if you've got a circular piling um, if, if it's a three foot diameter, you're going to account for a six foot radius around and you do want to subtract that from the length of the rope that you're going to be using. So if you want to be tied off, say four to five to 10 feet away from the piling, um, be sure to subtract your six foot or however big that piling is going to be, plus the amount you're going to be away from the piling. And then that should give you an idea of how much length the rope you want to leave yourself for your boat for your kayak your anchor trolley or just to tie off to a cleat so right now the wind is blowing from the north so i'm going to pretend that i'm throwing this in the water uh, if i'm up if i come up to this piling on my kayak i'm just going to toss this with enough slack that it goes far enough past the piling that current is going to float that ball over here to this other side of the piling and if you have enough length you can paddle yourself over here and once it gets to this side it's as easy as just grabbing it picking it up out of the water and using your spring link connect and you're done there's your bridge gripper rope whatever you want to call it so if I am about this far away, I'm looking at maybe eight feet here. I can use the cleat and tie it off to my kayak and I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about drifting all over the place or repositioning myself. Uh, I do have a pond in my backyard. So just to show you that this thing does float, I wish the wind will. The wind might be blowing enough. It probably is. Uh, just to show you that it does float and you can get it out quite a ways. Your um, spring clip is going to act as kind of a weight to throw it out. I've, I've got too much windbreak right here with the bank, but if you're on flat open water, that ball is going to float out pretty easy. If you do have a slack tide or a slack current and it's not going to float, well, same, same thing applies. Just pedal your kayak around to the other side of the piling and grab that thing, pick it up, and that'll work as well. I did forget to mention, because I did say in the beginning of the video you needed two of these, you really don't. Um, the reason I said you need two, I guess I should have said you might want to use another one if you were to want to uh, attach this to the other end of your rope, and which I probably will. That way it's always secure to your boat, you're not going to lose it. but. I still, if I don't need that full length of rope, once this is thrown out and in the water and around that piling, then I would just, like I said, I would cleat off and be done with it. You know, this is gonna hold you wherever you need to go. I also do have an anchor trolley on this kayak. So that's probably the other thing I would do is uh, before I 
tied off I would run through here and say I threw that thing out I have it where I want and if I wanted to uh, position my trolley in the back then that's going to be leading off to the piling and I can still do my cleat tie off right there vice versa if I wanted to be um, with the current the opposite way then I could run the anchor trolley up that way uh, I think I will attach this to the end. You can just do the same thing, tie another knot to it. That way it's always in your boat no matter what. In the unfortunate event that you flip, you've got that thing anchored down. That's the same way I do my anchor uh, for when I'm anchoring down into the, to the mud or the grass or wherever I'm fishing. Is I've always got this thing connected to my anchor and then it runs through my anchor trolley. And whenever I feel like I've got enough uh, length on where I'm fishing and the fishing I'm doing then I'll just tie off. If you don't have a cleat you can get creative and just uh, tie on to something else here or however you keep yourself stationary. Folks that's it. I think that's going to be pretty effective for its intended purpose. Um, I'll let you know if it doesn't work out the next time I'm fishing pilings. I do live about an hour away from my favorite fishing spots on the coast. But if I can't always get over there as often as I'd like to, maybe I'll come up with some more content such as this to help everybody out. Get outside and make some memories. Be safe. <laughs>